Are you feeling down? Are you feeling blue? Are you sad because the Padres haven't won anything in decades? Probably not. I don't think so. Because I don't know why you'd click on this video. Because this video doesn't have anything to do with baseball. No, no, it doesn't. But it does have a little something to do with investors living in San Diego who are having trouble getting their real estate business off the ground, right? You're in San Diego, the beautiful, beautiful beaches, the sun, the girl. Oh, my God, San Diego's great, right? But because San Diego's so great, folks, it makes investing in real estate near impossible for everyday blue-collar people who just want to get started because you're dealing with the most expensive real estate in the world, right? So what do you do? Do you wave, do you wave the white flag and just give up and just go, up? Oh, I could have been a great real estate investor. I could have been awesome. I could have had passive income. I could have had passive cash flow, mailbox money. But alas, I live in San Diego, so I'm screwed. I'll never be able to afford it. What do I do, right? You don't have to give up. There are other options, and today we are going to explore them. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Today, I'm working with my man, Rod, Blue Collar, Blue Collar Cat from San Diego. And Rod, I don't want you giving up on your real estate dreams. I don't want you giving up on the life that you want to live where you get passive income. You get multiple streams of income. Y'all ever read that book? I read that book when I was like 18, Multiple Streams of Income. That was a dope book. I'm not being paid by that author, although that'd be cool if I was. I don't remember his name, but hey, bro, somebody link his name in the comments below and let him know I'm pumping up his book, man. You give me a couple bucks, we'll slap that son bitch right here. But anyway, that's not what today's show's about. Today's show is about my man Rod. My man, Rod, getting his investment business off the ground. Rod, San Diego's great. We've already talked about this. We know San Diego's awesome. But how do regular folks get started in real estate if they're in San Diego? They can't do it, right? They, it's impossible. It's impossible unless you're a millionaire to buy rental properties in San Diego, right? So a lot of you guys out there are looking, looking out of state. And that's what I specialize in. And today, Rod, I got a deal for you. It's only going to require about 20 grand out of your pocket. I'm going to go over the property the market, and how we can handle the investment for you on the ground Why you do what you do raising your family out there in sunny San Diego. Let's jump into the numbers right after this. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. Now is the time where I earn my money, right? Talking to y'all, getting y'all hyped, getting y'all excited. None of that matters unless I could walk the walk. Anybody on the internet can talk the talk, but can I actually walk the walk? Yes, I believe I can with properties like this one. By the way, if you're not familiar with who I am, Am I just some dude just spitting crap out of my butt on the Internet? No. As a matter of fact, I have sold over $200 million worth of investment real estate to people like you. Okay, I help blue-collar people like you get involved in low-cost real estate. Real estate that is located in markets that have reasonable landlord-tenant laws. Right? We can't invest in markets where the... The scales have been tipped, right? You got crooked politicians putting their finger on the scale, selling your rights as a private property owner. They're using your rights as currency to buy votes. 
inhibiting your ability to earn money in an honest way. Well, we say no to that. We say screw that. We say find the markets where it makes sense. Find the markets where the numbers are going to accomplish your goals. And that's what I've done, okay? And I'm going to set you up to understand this market much like you're a local. This property, 526 East Avenue, Elyria, Ohio, 44035. Now, when you're buying real estate and you see a property sitting on the market for a very long time, that should be like a red flag. Ding, 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 ding. This property, 122 days on the market, priced at 94500 But I don't think that's a bad price. I think I can get it a little lower than that. I want to try to pick this up for you for 90 okay? Now, <clears throat> we have to dig deeper, okay? Just thinking 122 days on the market is bad. That's a good starting point, but we got to look into it deeper, which I have done. What has happened is it was off the market, okay? It was on the market, then it was placed under contract, held off the market for a very long time. The sellers allowed it to stay under contract for much longer than they should have. Buyer kind of strung along, and eventually that buyer couldn't do the deal. So now it's back, ready to rock. So this number is actually fairly misleading, which is why I, I'm going to have you bid very aggressively. Now, Illyria, folks. I could almost get, by the way, it's very presidential. I like this a little presidential, very Americana right here. Now, should you pay extra for that? Hell no, absolutely not. But what I want to talk to you about, why I cruised through the photos, because this is already occupied. We have two tenants in there, okay? They're both paying 600 which is below market rent. We're going to get the market rents up to 750 okay? So this operating at full capacity under Holton Wise Management will bring in 1500 a month or 18000 a year. Now, as you see from the photos, it's in pretty good condition except for this. This is a big red flag. But before I talk about this big red flag, I want to talk to you about the market, right? We're going to get into this because this is a big deal. It's in Elyria, Elyria, Ohio. A lot of you probably aren't familiar with Elyria, Ohio, and that's okay. You probably shouldn't be because nobody is, right? Elyria, Ohio is located in the Cleveland market. Obviously, you folks are familiar with the Cleveland market. If you Google, like, what's the best turnkey market, Cleveland's always in the top ten, okay? Cleveland is the hub, right? It's the main, like, press-grabbing city in the greater Cleveland area, right? Cleveland itself, like, 360-something thousand people live there. The whole market, though, several million, three, four million, okay? This is just a half hour west, okay? So we handle this, right? And as a matter of fact, I actually find the city itself of Elyria to be much more landlord-friendly than the city of Cleveland. So we're actually grabbing more landlord-friendly deals out in Elyria, so I love that. It's centralized in the Cleveland area, so all the draw to the Cleveland area, like the medical and the tech and all that jazz, right? The draw, the jobs, right? Very easy to work in Cleveland, live in Elyria, okay? So you still get all that, but you get the benefits of, in my opinion, a more landlord-friendly government. On top of that, <clears throat> because everybody's so focused, so focused on Cleveland itself, the properties that have an actual Cleveland proper address, in my opinion, are selling for higher prices than what they are in Elyria, maybe too high, a little inflated. So right now, Everybody is going this way. We're hooking this way, and we're stealing some solid deals, right? So that's Elyria. I love Elyria. Solid C-class area. We are crushing it in Elyria. Now, on to the red flag. What you see here is a drop ceiling, folks, and this, this is water damage. Now, when you see a drop ceiling anywhere other than a basement of a house, that could be a red flag. What that is is they covered up water damage in a lazy way. So what else have they done in a lazy way that we don't know? And it looks like they haven't even fixed it because it's still discoloring the tiles. Right now, I think to lock this up, because I think a lot of people are going to want it, because the property doesn't need to be perfect to sell for only 90 k It's a $1,500 rental, folks. What the numbers are going to look like, 1500 comes in, but of course you don't get to keep that. Fixed variable expense estimates with my team handling it for you totally passively. I anticipate you'll make an average of eighty-seven fifty a year. You pick it up at 90. You only put down 22 and a half. A bank kicks in the rest, 67 and a half. That's a 24% cash on cash return projection, folks. So the house doesn't need to be perfect. It's a 100-year-old home. People are going to jump on it because of those numbers and those numbers alone. So we got to bid 90. But that is not the end of our due diligence. Once we get it under contract, we'll get you a third-party home inspector to go through the home with a fine-tooth comb 
and figure out exactly what's going on. We know something's going on, okay? Once we get the additional information, I could then go to bat for you and beat those fucking sellers up and try to get some more pricing uh, discounts thrown your way, right? We know going into this, this is probably an issue, but we will make a big stink, right? That is why you pay me, folks. I don't work for the seller. I don't know what the seller's got going on in their lives, and I don't care, right? People talk about win-win. Yeah, it's a win-win deal, a win for me, a win for you. We don't care about that seller. I'm on your team, okay? Now, I want to show you something else. This right here, I'm not sure what floor this is on. This may be the first floor, and they got the laundry inside the unit. Now, <clears throat> that drop ceiling, I think this might be why you saw that, okay? A lot of times in these duplexes, we put the laundry in the basement, right? Having laundry in a unit means you probably have it in the other unit. So if I had to guess, I bet you that water, probably not leaking from the roof. It might just be leaking from the laundry room, which is probably going to be a cheaper fix than if we had a roof. Because if you had to replace the roof on a property like this, you're looking at a cost, I don't know, probably like seven or eight grand, right? So that is my thought on why you see so many drop ceilings. So we know there might be an issue, but we will have to investigate that further. Now, that said, don't think we're getting like 30 grand off, right? Yep, here's the upstairs unit, and what do you know? The lawn, here's definitely on the upstairs, and then there you go, boom. There's the in-suite laundry, right? So I'm assuming that might be the problem we're seeing. So... With that said, know that after we get this inspection report, we're going to have some issues and there's going to be some room to negotiate. But don't think we're getting like 30K off, right? We still have to be competitive. There's a lot of people trying to scoop up deals like this. Again, we're looking at a projection when we get rent all the way up to market value. 24% projection cash on cash return, right? You don't get that in other markets, okay? And as far as getting that rent up, again, the tenants currently, they're at 6 and 6. Slowly work them up. We don't want a turnover, right? A turnover is going to mean we got to redo the units, right? I saw some patching on the walls you don't want to mess with that keep the cash flow coming you should not be in a hurry to remove income streams right you want the income to keep coming into you don't be in a hurry to remove income and then send money back to holton wise don't get me wrong i love when you send money my way and we can and will fix the units get them ready to go market rep but you don't need to keep the money coming in Spend that time coming in. There's going to be enough natural turnover in this business that you'll get your units uh, renovated and up to market rent standards at that time. Do not add artificial turnover to your business. That's how you lose money. I'll tell you this. If you got one investor who's owned this property for 10 years, same two tenants paying 600 a month, He's going to make more money than the same investor who owned it for 10 years, got market rent of 750 or maybe even more every single year, but he turned it over every single year. That person's going to make less money, right? Turnovers kill your returns. So we want to slowly work these existing tenants up. The goal should be to get the existing tenants up without paying for turnover costs. And that, folks, is what I think we need to do on this deal. This is the type of analysis. This is the type of of representation you get when you work with someone who's done this over 200 million times, right? $200 million worth of investment property sales. So again, if you want to work with me directly, one-on-one, -on -one, click the show notes below, book a free call with my team, and then let me know what you want to do with this particular property. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.